Trek Land, a place where that man has not gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser present championship boxing for your entertainment. This bout is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges are Gene Williams, Rick Bays, and Stuart Winston. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, the referee, working for the 75th time in a world title bout, Tony Perez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City's Convention Hall, by way of Donald J. Trump and the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with stars and stripes trim. His weight, 221 and three quarter pounds. He comes from Kansas City. His professional record, undefeated, 28 and 0, 24 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tommy, the Duke, Morrison. And across the ring in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red, gold, and black trim, weighing an even 225 pounds. Originally from Jacksonville, Florida, he now fights for the Triple Threat Gym in Newark, New Jersey. This 1988 Olympic gold medal champion is now undefeated as a professional with a record of 17 and 0, 12 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBO World Heavyweight Champion, Merciless. Ray Burson! Burson, Morrison, you already got your instructions in the dressing room, all right? Give me a good clean fight and I will not bother neither one of you. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands and most important, Protect yourself at all times. Check hands and good luck to the both of you. Biggest fight in the career of each of these fighters. Tommy Morrison, the challenger. In the corner to the left, Sean, what's going through his mind right now? Right now, he's trying to run through his fight plan. You're waiting for this first bell to ring. Get it underway. This is the longest time between the two fights. And how about Ray Mercer? Ray Mercer defending his title. He is also trying to run through his fight plan and try to establish control early for both of these heavyweights. These two fighters have combined for 22 first-round knockouts. 15 by Morrison. And there's Seven five. by Mercer. And this is a very small ring. 18 foot, 6 inches inside the ropes. The well, ring is a puncher's mat. Very thick padding. You can dig your toes into there and push thrust forward with your shots here are two sluggers looking for an open opening neither a defensive whiz so you know there will be openings and it is Morrison trying to work inside Mercer who is 10 pounds heavier than he was against Damiani and that fight was nine months ago so if you start look for advantages and disadvantages on each side Mercer has uh, been uh, less active than Morrison in the ring both fighters have been coming off series of injuries. It was the calf muscle that hurt Morrison. He said he couldn't move. He was stepping over himself against Baulin when he was out box. And Mercer with many injuries. The last one, an ankle injury that originally postponed a fight between he and Riddick Bowe, which came after the postponement of this initial fight back in August when Morrison was uh, cut in sparring over the eye. And they both say that for this fight, they're at 100%. You know, and I have fought in the past with injuries. When you go into a ring without an injury, it's an unusual feeling. No, 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 a little bit pushing behind the head from Mercer, just trying to take Morrison out of it. Just that the referee separate. Oh, big Good combination. shots by Morrison, who wants to do it early. He has never been beyond six. And he doesn't want to go to the later rounds. Morrison coming on. And Mercer could be in trouble in the first round. Now Mercer coming back. Now Morrison cannot start reading the headlines. He wants to have a good showing in this fight. He wants to try to knock Mercer out early, but don't waste your punches. 
You've got to pinpoint those shots. For Mercer, sometimes when you're getting pummeled like he is, the best thing to do is just get, get with it, get busy. And in the back of the mind of Ray Mercer, part of his strategy, he would love to see Marsden punch himself out early. Very much so. A very changed fighter now that he is the champion, too. We've seen an example of how a championship can change a fighter. You bring a confidence of a champ into the, into the ring with you. The confidence of that title belt. Ray Mercer won the gold medal at Seoul at the age of 27, the oldest member of the 88 Olympic squad. He says he certainly has more to lose in this head-to-head -head with Morrison at the age now of 30. Closing 10 seconds. Good exchanges here in the first three minutes of the scheduled 12-rounder. Opening round from Tommy the Duke Morrison. Look at this, the best shot of the night from him. Still early, the good right uppercut followed by the left hook. Here is a, another shot of that punch. A great combination because the one shot, the uppercut, brings your, head, your opponent's head up. The left hook tries to knock it off. There it is. Up, no defense when your head's up like that. And the left hook knocks it off. Here's the corner of Tommy the Duke the Morrison. And it is uh, certainly a team in the corner. Second round action. Good first round for Tommy Morrison. Both fighters hearing it from their corners. You heard in the interviews of Tommy Morrison referring to everything he does as we. It is certainly teamwork as far as Morrison's concerned. And he brought out the Howisers, although missing against Mercer. If there has been uh, any criticism of Mercer, although he denies it, it has been his training habits. He says he's been training hard for this fight. And the Duke must be very careful not to waste those shots at the air. It takes more out of a fighter to swing and miss than to swing and land. And he referred to himself as we in the interviews, but he is all alone out there in that ring. The last defeat suffered by Tommy Morrison was back in 1988, early in the Olympic trials against Ray Mercer. Morrison is uh, perfect as a pro, 28-0 with 24 knockouts and a lot of those walkover fights and he knows this is his first test in his uh, professional career punch. big left hook his favorite punch is that left Tommy Morrison the challenger is Morrison and he looks very confident at this point and it's the champion Mercer who's a little leery he is finding that it's not the same 19-year-old former high school football player fighting his first heavyweight fight. That's when they met in the amateurs. And strong is Morrison. Look at, he's lowered his, his trunk, his center of gravity, and he's able to manhandle Ray Mercer here in the second round. Still early yet. These fights are scheduled for 12. And remember, with these two fighters, either can fall behind and still deliver the home run ball. This is the story of power. Mercer did it in his last fight against Damiani as he was outboxed completely in that fight and in the ninth round knocked out Damiani. That had knockout written all over it, but a good head move by Mercer to elude the big right hand. That's the way he got this title. That is incidentally his only knockout after five. Could become a factor. Mercer is uh, rather Morris in great respect for Mercer. Says he knows he is the heart of the lion. And a great chin. And there's the uppercut testing the chin. But Morrison feels that Mercer is a one-dimensional fighter and hasn't really improved much from his days as an Olympian. But he says you don't knock Mercer out with one or two shots. You have to make him quit. And so far, it has been Morrison big in the first two rounds. Join us ringside at the convention center on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. WBO heavyweight championship, Tommy Morrison in the black trunks, Ray Mercer in the white. And it is uh, Morrison feeling more and more confident. Two big rounds for Morrison. Their fights don't go too long, and we are in the third. 
Morrison with 24 knockouts in his 28 victories. Mercer has knocked out 12 in his perfect 17-0 record. Good left hook again by Morrison. A quick flash left hook. Now the one from Mercer to put the punches together and come up the middle like Morrison did right there. And that uppercut may have split the lip. Yes, it did. The lower lip of Ray Mercer. That's the same problem he had in the Damiani fight. The lower lip was cut again right on it. Third round, Morrison teeing off on Mercer. Mercer, a little peekaboo, one minute into the third round. One of the questions was what would happen if Morrison got in trouble? He's rarely never had to survive a war. And Mercer has. Well, so far, it's Mercer who looks like he will have to survive. Morrison is essentially unscathed at the moment. Okay, right! Well, Mercer is surviving early, and look at him wisely tying up inside. Let the referee break it or buy you some time. What he wants to do is just get you fight into those later rounds. But he has taken a beat he's doing okay, that. Right. Paying the not, price. Not afraid to get hit, though. He's a man that'll, that'll take two punches in order to land one of his own. He knows he's got some power. Mercer has gone 12 on a couple occasions. Morrison has never been beyond six. He's only gone past the second round on seven occasions in 28 fights. And here he is in round number three tonight. Well, his idol's Rocky Marciano, and he is fighting like the Rock tonight. Big combinations, a busy pace. Morrison stalking. If he had any butterflies, they're gone by now. He has been the aggressor in this fight. But he knows he cannot get careless against Mercer. For the WBO Heavyweight Championship, Morrison and the other divisions ranks between 8 and 12. For the WBA, BC, and the IBF. Now, Mercer, as a champion, is not ranked in the other divisions. Where would you put him? Well, they are all rival organizations, but I'd put him about the same place that Tommy is, from 8 to 12. And there's a big right by Mercer to end the third round. So far for Tommy Morrison, it looks like uh, this has uh, been scripted by his choreographer in Rocky Five. Mercer, though, very confident sitting in his corner discussing things with trainer Hank no, Johnson. No, 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 no punch it. Well, he thinks that Tommy is going to punch himself out, but he's having to pay a price for it. His bottom lip is sliced wide open. They don't want for Ray to get to get hit as much. They want him to move a little bit more so he doesn't have to take so many shots. And now Mercer puts a couple of rights together. You remember, he left Morrison with a right hand as a gift to end the third round. Crowd getting into this one. Great matchup. Two sluggers. We're trying to find more and more about them, see which one proceeds up the ladder in the heavyweight division. It is for the WBO title. But these two fighters uh, have the proper perspective. They know the winner goes on and gets in line for some possible major paydays and a chance to crack the upper echelon of the heavyweight world and there Morrison runs in to the left and now Mercer coming on in round number four and for big for good professionals the fight starts after three a good left uppercut to buckle the knees of Morrison this is scheduled for 12 so for Mercer he's just trying to get everything going in the first three rounds Tommy Morrison is hurt right now Tommy Morrison has his mouth wide open. Easier to get your jaw broke when your mouth is open like that. Showing signs of fatigue also. With that mouth open, your tongue is hanging out. The Mercer corner telling him, be first. And Mercer has been here in the fourth round. Mercer wants to take Morrison into uncharted waters. And here is why after the sixth round. Break! Break in! Tony, Tony tying up, just trying to get to those later rounds. 
but they, they warned him about getting too far behind in this fight. Hank Johnson said, you can't take all this punishment. Ray Mercer may have been three rounds behind coming into this fourth, but he is turning the fight in his direction here in round four. May described himself as an adaptable fighter. He said that if he needed to, he could box, and that's what he's done here. Right now, he's boxing around Tommy Morrison and landing shots. Pivotal round number four as Mercer acknowledges his fans here in Atlantic City. He resides in Newark, New Jersey, and feels a little better about uh, this evening as he sits in between rounds, and Morrison is now hearing it from his team. One punch shot. We're going to the head. we got to go low. Use the body. It means you have to change your levels. Relax. Recover. Keep it low. you got to change your levels. you got to follow up with your punches. Right? What you're trying to do is you're letting him throw Change first, your levels. And then you're covering while he's in too tight. Says Tom Burgess, former well, amateur coach. Time, you know. Put it out, put it out. Look into the corner of right Ray action. Mercer. Yeah, yeah. Fourth round action. Mercer turned it around that round with heavy shots like this. Good punches from him. In that round, Tommy Morrison started lunging. Mercer made him pay for it. Mercer says he's packed more experience into his 17 pro fights and Morrison has in his 27. <laughs> Morrison pounding away. Morrison may be going. Morrison is gone. his first defense of the WBO heavyweight crown and does it with a dramatic fifth round knockout over Tommy Morrison. Mercer takes the blows in the third, gets Morrison in a position. Perhaps he had punched himself out. There were certainly glaring openings for Morrison's defense in the fourth and then here in the fifth round. It was that one shot at the end of the third for Mercer Perhaps that told the story. He knew Morrison was ready, and, and he jumped on him in the fourth and then in the fifth. Because of the inexperience, Morrison went out, and his hands started coming down in this fourth and fifth round. Down come the hands, tying up more, showing the effects. His mouth is wide open, a tired fighter, and all it was was easy pickings for Ray Mercer. Here he is just connecting with shots, unanswered punches, out on his feet and hurt is Tommy the Duke Morrison. A lot of shots from merciless Ray Mercer. Referee let that one go a little bit too long. Of too many punches. Here it is again. The heavy shots from Mercer. The combinations. Morrison is trying to tie up but just can't do it. Tony Perez needs oh. to step in and that's all. Oh, that's enough. Oh. Tony too Perez much. late in breaking this one up and that one ironically looked like a choreographed Rocky movie. Only problem for Morrison, this one was for real. We'll be back with a champion, Ray Mercer, in just a moment. The convention center is buzzing. On top, 
Ray Mercer with a fifth round knockout over Tommy Morrison. And Ray, did you think you gave up the first three rounds to get to the position to take well, Morrison out? How strong it was. He was, was way strong on the inside. And you know, we're from Brooke, we worked on the inside, but mostly I was trying to work on a little boxing just in case he was uh, too strong on the inside. So uh, everything I can, I, I swear to you, went according to the game plan. I took a little punishment, but what fight don't I? Even the game plan with the cut in your mouth and the bridge well, you know, know, I, I figured I don't have to go to the hospital tonight, so I'm happy. Yeah. Were you ever in danger? Uh, no, I felt, now he threw a couple of good body shots and uppercuts, uh, knocked me off balance. You know, sometimes you think you hurt, but you're really not. So I just grabbed him and did what any other smart boxer would do. You told me that you were going to try to take him into the later rounds. Why? Because just, just for that reason, he was, he was slowing down a little bit. When I started moving, you see he slowed down. He was strong on the inside only. He couldn't, from the outside, he was leaping, throwing only one punch. He may have got one punch in and came back with another, but he wasn't able to get all the punches that he was throwing when I was laying on the inside with him. Ray, when did you see the opening? When did you know you, you, you would have him? Because I started, what I started doing is moving and countering, because he started leaping. And he, and he left himself open. So I came over with the hardest right hand I could and caught him. And he caught him with a left hook behind that and was right hand city from then on. All right, we're going to take a look at the flurry that ended the fight. You had a big right hand to end the third round. That may have turned it, but this is the conclusion of the fight. Tell us what was happening. Right there, uh, I was just trying to get, get in on him because he was covering up and he was getting tired. And that's the opening right there over the top. And I hit him and he tried to grab me and lean. And right there, I knew I had him. So I just come with all right hand. I just knew I had him with that right there. Ray, when he started lunging, did you try to make him run into your fists? Oh uh, yeah, I tried to. Well, I tried to do it like counter, but coming in at the same time, and it worked. Everything went perfect. I thought the referee let it go a little too far. The guy could have been killed right there. All right, when you came into this fight, uh, Ray Mercer, the words you were talking about, respect, legitimacy. Where does this fight leave you? Uh, far respect. I, like I told you before, I really don't care about respect. I'm gonna keep winning the fights and take it as far as I can. Once I get on top, undisputed heavyweight champion, I think I'll get the respect that I deserve. And especially out. during the boxing. Ray Mercer makes it to 18 and 0. No question, his most impressive victory to date, handing Tommy Morrison the first loss in his career.